So the, you know the old political adage, you mustn't ever waste a crisis. It's important that we take the good out of this crisis for Gibraltar. This has been an extraordinarily difficult time. If I can put it this way, and, uh, and we have to be very careful with what's coming because a second wave, a second surge or peak could be potentially very dangerous for the whole of the world in Europe. But for Gibraltar, this is almost as if we've survived indeed one round one against the virus. And as we look to the future, we have to look at the lessons of epidemiology, something that perhaps we might not even have expected to be looking at at the beginning of the year, and what it is that we now start to know about the virus. And we know that uh, the virus, because of the transmission that it has, potentially is carried better by pollution. We know that it's affecting people who are obese more than it's affecting people who are sick, sorry, who are um, um, uh, fit. Um, and if we look at what it is that makes us obese and what gives us pollution, it's the fact that we don't walk enough, it's the fact that we have too many cars on our road. So put all that together with where we were at the time of the last general election, where we wanted to take Gibraltar. Indeed, together Gibraltar came out with a plan for Lionwell Road. We had different plans, which we also want to implement, about the greening the area along Queensway. And you look at what it is that the, the world is moving towards, you know, a greener world as well. These are the sorts of measures that we have to implement to start to reduce pollution, to start to get people to walk more. Um, and that is part of the process of the public health of the nation, not the micro public health issues which relates to this pandemic, but the macro public health issues that affect us on a day to day basis when we're not being attacked by a particular epidemic. And I think we have an obligation, therefore, to now that we've reduced traffic a lot, there's a lot less human movement, not come out of this back to where we were and then try to implement things slowly. Let's use this moment where traffic is already down to take the step forward and then ensure that we are bringing other measures into play as well in slow order. So do you feel like you've had to move rapidly before, as you say, people's habits start returning because there is a perception among people that we've spoken to ahead of this program uh, that they didn't see it coming, um, that it wasn't a measure that was specifically detailed in your manifesto, um, that it didn't necessarily even flow from the um, sustainable transport and traffic and parking plan that the government sort of uh, spent a lot of time and resources studying. So is it the case that you felt you had to do this now or it would become harder to do? Well, I, I take issue with some of what you said. I think this is the sort of measure that the STTP did refer us to. But um, not, not, specifically, not specifically. Not specifically, but talks about doing it in other areas where we may also do it. Uh, but we've seen how the traffic flow is down and we've seen how, therefore, the air quality is up. And look, I get it. One aircraft probably does all of the pollution that you see on Linewall Road. But are we saying that the only positive step that we can take is to close our airport? Or you know, we know that cruise liners, not those that might be powered by LNG in the future, also pollute and bunkering also pollutes. But are we saying that the only environmental measure we can take um, is to close our port or that measures that we take which affect our roads are not legitimate unless we also close our port and then denude ourselves of the arrival of tourism? Uh, Plainly, I think that is not the right answer. It's to take little steps in the direction of a better future. And therefore, that's why we thought it was important to do this now. When the traffic flow is down, not allowing the traffic flow to go back, but to do it in a way that is measured. Now, remember that we're not talking about the full pedestrianisation of Linewall Road. We're talking about continuing to allow residents, deliveries, electric vehicles, public service vehicles and taxis, people with blue badges. So there will still be traffic on that road. We just need to be able to control that traffic better. If there were a problem at Queensway, you could have a, a fire or another problem at Queensway, you would need to have a north-south artery open and line wall would be available for that purpose. But on a normal day, you would have much better cycle lane availability much better pedestrian av availability in that area. It'll be more pleasant for people who live in the area and who want to park in the area. So I think all in all, this is part of making Gibraltar a little less polluted in that area and also taking measures so that we, this is not just a displacement of pollution. We don't just want more cars on Queensway, as some people have suggested. We actually want less people in their cars and more people on public transport. So there'll be more availability of buses, 
different routes worked out for these purposes, more children going to school on buses, I hope, in the future, and a charge for using Midtown if you're coming into town to park your car. Those are the things we have to do. Look, everybody celebrates wanting to be greener. Every celeb everybody celebrates wanting less pollution. Everybody thinks that Greta Thornburg's doing a great job evangelizing exactly the same thing. And then when you take a step, people say, hang on a minute, that's gonna affect me. I'm not so, not so environmentalist now. Well, look, it's the government's role to be everyone's environmentalist and to take the steps for the community. Are you worried about this decision being potentially unpopular and not getting the support that it might need, given that it is a pilot project, in order to succeed? I mean, there, there has been feedback about people who think that there might be a similar volume of traffic just on different roads, yeah, that they're going to spend longer in their cars yeah, to get from A to B. Th that's exactly the point. This measure that we're talking about is not to be judged on its own. This is part of a package of measures designed to keep people out of their cars. And look, I get it that we're in a strange time now. I tend to walk to work every day, as you know, but I'm not walking right now because of the situation in which we find ourselves. I expect to be able to start walking to work very soon. Uh, but that's what more people need to do. I mean, I felt my weight come back since I'm not walking to work. That's affecting my personal health. More people need to walk, so it's positive for their health too. This is the reality of what we're talking about. Whether that is or is not popular, to a very great extent, is not what I have to be looking at. I have to be looking at what is the right thing to do. And that's why I said in the course of my intervention, I think on Monday, that we have to be brave in the way that we shape the future for our children, for future generations. We have to be brave in the way that we shape the brave new world into we emerge after this pandemic. And I think people will eventually see that this is the right thing. Look, I still remember when Peter Caruana announced that he was pedestrianizing Main Street and getting rid of the old car park at Casements. Juan Carlos Perez, who for me was one of the people with the best political nows around, said to me, the people will never wear it. And a couple of years later, Juan Carlos Perez said to me, I was wrong. People love it. Mm -hmm. And I think Linewall Road will be a little like that pioneering step that the GSD took at the time. Have you quantified the cost of this scheme? I don't see it as a, as a scheme that carries a cost. I think I see it as a scheme that carries a profit. So you think that the government, uh, the economy of Gibraltar, will benefit from this measure? Hugely. I see this as a net gain as, a, as an approach to public health, but also as an approach to the city of Gibraltar being a place where people want to be. When I designed the 2019 general election manifesto for the GSLP Liberals, that Green Gibraltar manifesto, I had in mind what had happened when we designed Commonwealth Park. One of the things that we were constantly being told was, look, Gibraltar is very attractive to senior executives in the gaming and financial services industry, the things that make Gibraltar economically strong. But the soft issues are not there. There are some things that Gibraltar just does not provide. There isn't the green areas, etc. Well, look, our green park, our Commonwealth Park, and our green uh, Queensway is also part of making Gibraltar a better place to live. That is the biggest profit that we can leave for the people of Gibraltar, but also one of the things that makes Gibraltar most attractive to visitors, tourists, and to those who want to do business in Gibraltar. But that sounds like a, a medium to long-term view of uh, how well this measure um, mm. could perform for Gibraltar. Is that how you're approaching it? I mean, because you've, uh, you've announced it as a pilot project, but you're, you're hopeful that it'll be successful and that its success can be measured in years to come? Uh, all good politics is in the medium and long term, and short-termism in politics is not a good thing for the community um, that uh, the politicians who design such policies would be serving. So I definitely see this as a good medium to long-term policy. The reason this is a pilot project is because there could be other road closures in the future, not because this might not in some way uh, continue to be the object of what we want to see through. I think this is exactly the sort of project that the whole of the community will want us to see through. I've seen some adverse comments on social media, but look, if I said that I was going to give every Gibraltarian an ingot of gold, I would see some adverse comments on social media. Some people would say I should give them two, and some people would say I should give none. How long is the pilot scheme for? Have you decided when you might judge how well it's working? So I, I think in the nature of what it is that we're doing, we need to see this process settle down. In other words, you need to see the whole process go through what you might call all the seasons. You need to see a, 
a summer season when you have a spring and summer season when you have lots of tourists here. You need to see an autumn and winter season when you might see people needing to use their vehicles in a different way and you need to see it bed down. And I think by the end of that process, we will have forgotten about Lionwall Road and we will be looking at different options and people will be living with the new Lionwall Road approach that we have in a very positive way. Um, can I ask, in respect of how you've done this, you mentioned earlier that you felt the need perhaps to do it rapidly because of the COVID-19 uh, health um, emergency, public health emergency, um, but it differs in, in approach to how you have introduced other big changes where you might have had a command paper, consultation yeah. period. What would you say to people who, who feel like this has been a bit abrupt? That this is a, a completely different approach because it's born out of something completely uh, unprecedented. I mean, uh, not just the unprecedented use of the word unprecedented, but the reality that this is a completely unprecedented moment in which we're living. And you have to take the benefits of it. I think I would be accused of not having taken the right benefit out of this moment if we hadn't acted in the way that we have. Because, look, do you let this moment go to waste? Do you wait then for a moment when Lionwall Road might not be so busy in order to start implementing a change like this? You can't. This moment only comes along once. But we were in the thick of implementing our manifesto. So the cabinet was already considering the Green Gibraltar position in respect of the front of Queensway, the Green Gibraltar position on Walk the Wall. So what we've done is we've said, right, okay, this is going to be a part of what Walk the Wall is going to deliver. Let's bring all of those elements together in one main committee, one interministerial committee. I consulted with the leader of the opposition, but only in relation to Lionwall Road and Chatham Counter Guard, where he gave me his personal view that it was agreeable. Of course, we also know that Together Gibraltar put this issue in the course of their election campaign less than six months ago and garnered almost 25% support. So and there is a lot to suggest that this is not something that comes out of the blue. But it is something where we have to start implementation and then talk about how to improve implementation rather than lose the benefit of the slower traffic period which we're going through, come back to a full flow of traffic and then start the process of consultation. I think that would have been contrary to the interest, the wider public interest of the people of Gibraltar and that's why we're acting like we're acting. On Monday, as well as introducing uh, the idea of these road closures uh, coming this summer, you also said that you expected to publish the document that we can see you've brought today, Unlock the Rock, um, within 48 hours. Um, but that publication has been delayed. Can you tell us where we are on it? Yes, indeed. This is a, this is a very delicate document to put together because it's about all of the phasing that brings us back to what we might call the new normal, the rock unlock, that final position that we can't wait to reach. Um, and getting that right is uh, as much the advice on epidemiology that we're receiving, as much as the legislation that will have to be undone and some new legislation led over. There's the politics of everything that we're dealing with, the, the international politics in particular. What's going to happen with aviation, what's going to happen with frontiers, will there be quarantine periods for movements among Schengen member states and indeed between the UK and Schengen or will quarantine apply only to third countries to what is the European Union as we know it with the UK in the transitional period. All of that is highly complex. We've already released all of the details of what phase one is, you know, the the um, over 70 year olds being able to go out to exercise and the uh, phase one for the opening of retail shops, uh, ship repair, construction, etc. So that's already happening. The pressure now is to ensure that we get this right. And I've consulted with the leader of the opposition. I'm going to share with him the latest iteration of the document. He's already seen earlier iterations. Ministers will be seeing it also. Um, and I assume the shadow cabinet as well will have a chance to consider it. Um, and then I hope next week we'll be in a better position to give a more definitive position of what it is that the document uh, proposes. And we're trying to take a view for 12 weeks. Now, you know that in this epidemic, things have been changing almost on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it's right with the United Kingdom over the weekend uh, publishing its own unlocking document and Spain moving into uh, its first substantive phase of movement between provinces, etc., that we should have the benefit of that before we publish. Okay, and um, in respect of phase one, which uh, you've already given details on, uh, how do you think the public has responded to that, given that we've seen, uh, for example, beaches quite full uh, yesterday, um, by way of example, 
people not necessarily limiting themselves to, to just half an hour of, of exercise, but setting up a beach umbrella and, and, you know, enjoying the afternoon there. So this is a very difficult balancing act. And I, I thought that locking people down would be difficult because it's totally counterintuitive. I'm a civil libertarian. I come at this from the point of view of wanting to defend our freedom of movement and of association above all else. But of course, more important than that is protecting life, the safety and security of our people. Um, and there are laws in place now, which mean that you cannot go out of your home unless you're going to a place of work, you're going to exercise, you're going to shop or for another reason to walk a pet, etc. You're not able under the law to go to the beach and set up a beach umbrella. You can go to the beach to do exercise, but if you set up a beach umbrella, you're not doing exercise. So people need to understand that the government has absolutely no desire whatsoever to prevent them going to the beach. But we have advice that tells us that we need a law like that in order to ensure that we're doing the best that we can to stop this public health emergency. So I would urge people to understand that we've given as much leeway as possible in this phase so that they can go to the beach and they can have a dip and they can you know, put their toes in the sand and if that's what they prefer in terms of exercise or if the weather is particularly nice, they can have that relief. But we need to ensure that we're not breaking the laws. That's what all of us have an obligation to do. Now, going forward, it may be that uh, the advice changes and we are able to allow more freedom. Otherwise, we won't be able to allow more freedom. We have to have more control. You'll only be able to go to the beach for short periods, even in high summer. By observing the rules now, we hope people will enable us to be putting this community in a situation where we can entirely release the rules in time for high summer and we can have more of a normal summer. At the moment, that's not clear, but we want to move in the, in the direction of liberalizing thing as, things as soon as possible. And I ask people to continue to act in keeping with the rules and the advice so that we can get out of this together as soon as possible.